All right, so we're going to look at one other method for determining volumes of solids of revolution. And uh, we'll try to sketch that out here. So we've already looked at this method using disks or washers, right? And, and we know how to make that work. So imagine that we have this curve here, and we've got the region, let's say, under the curve but above the x-axis between A and B. And we want to take that region and revolve it around one of the axes, right? Um, x-axis or, or y-axis doesn't matter, but um, let's, let's say we do, we do y, right? So we're going to revolve it around the y-axis, so I'll try to kind of make a, I know it's not a great copy, but imagine that it is, right? Um, mirror of our curve on the other side. I'll try again. Right. Something like that. So we're going to revolve this around, and we're going to generate this solid, like so, All right? Like so. Okay. So we can kind of see the region that's generated here, right? When we revolve this thing around, uh, and of course. The middle is cut out, so we want to account for that too at each of these. All right. So we're cutting out this middle bit. Okay, so there's the, uh, the solid that we're interested in. Now, we could, of course, we could do this using washers. We know how to do this using washers. We could, we could try to draw the washer in here at a given height. Um, but one of the things you'll notice is that the washers that we use, they're going to change halfway down because we move from working along the curve to working along the vertical line. Now that's not so bad because for this portion here, right, it's a, it's a constant radius for both of them, and that's, that's relatively straightforward, right? Um, it's just going to be volume of a cylinder, right? Volume of the big cylinder minus volume of the small cylinder. That's a simple calculation. You don't even need calculus for it. Okay, so we could do it in kind of two pieces and patch them together, but it turns out there is another method that you can use you can use what's called a cylindrical shell method. So the idea here is rather than doing washers and integrating with respect to y, we're going to do shells and integrate with respect to x. So the way it looks is like this. Um, we choose a particular x value. We, we travel up until we hit the curve. Down from the curve, okay. And we imagine just taking this vertical line segment and revolving it about the axis. So if we take that vertical segment and we revolve it about the axis, okay, we generate a cylinder, right? There's a cylinder. And remember that the, uh, the area for that, you know, the surface area of that cylinder, because we're not including the top or the bottom, Right? What is, what is the surface area of that cylinder? Well, the surface area of that cylinder is if you, you know, imagine cutting it. If you cut that cylinder and lay it flat, you get a rectangle, right? The height of the rectangle is, is or the height of the cylinder is the height of the rectangle. The width of the rectangle is the circumference of the cylinder, right? So the area is, is 2 pi r times h, okay? That's the, that's the surface area of that cylinder that we've drawn in, okay? Now, that area actually depends on x, okay? The radius is just x, right? The radius of the cylinder is just x, x. The height of the cylinder, well, that's f of x, all right? It's just the y value, okay? So we can express the area of the cylinder in terms of x. And then you can imagine that you might thicken that cylinder slightly, so you, you, know, you thicken it by uh, like an amount delta x, right? So you imagine it's like a tin can, right? So if you thicken it up, you add some tiny sort of infinitesimal thickness to your cylinder, well, then it occupies a, a certain uh, volume of, of metal, right? If you take a tin can, you know, cut the top and bottom off, you lay it flat, get the area, Calculate the thickness, you can figure out how much, you know, what the volume of metal in your can is. Okay? So, what you can do is for each x value, starting at A and ending at B, you get one of these cylinders. 
area, surface area of the cylinder is given by that. Thickening by an amount dx gives you an infinitesimal volume. Integrating should give you the result, right? So the, the volume of this solid stands to reason that it should be the integral from A to B of 2 pi x times f of x times dx. So that's an alternative volume formula. Now, a lot of problems can end up being solved by either disk method or washer method, or sorry, um, sort of washers or shells. You choose which one you want. And, and there are different reasons why you might choose one over the other. One might be like in the drawing I have here that um, we can do it as a single integral if we use shells, whereas we had to do it in two pieces if we wanted to do washers. Um, the other reason might be, well, to do washers, we would have to express x as a function of y, and maybe that's algebraically inconvenient, right, depending on what this function is. Maybe this is a much easier integral. Ultimately, that's what it boils down to. You choose the approach that will take you less work, right? What's going to be less work, shells or washers? So you kind of have to do enough problems, you gain some intuition on this, try to figure out, okay, based on the functions I'm dealing with and, and the shape of the region, which of the two methods is, is going to give me the least trouble. You kind of have to break it down and, and decide case by case.